all down into three uh, points, three thoughts. And uh, the first of those three is verses 1 uh, down through verse 19. And, uh, of course, beginning in verse number 1, if you follow along, it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, uh, his thick cloud passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place, he delivered me because he delighted in me. We go back, if you would, even before the first verse, and we're reminded just very quickly as I review uh, what we uh, taught last week. Uh, we have the setting given to us here uh, as a heading here. Uh, this was after God uh, gave David great victory over his enemy uh, from the hand of Saul and others. Uh, we love the thought there that David here was called by God, the servant of the Lord. And uh, you think about all that David could have been called. He could have been called the mighty king, but he wasn't. He could have been called the mighty warrior. He was, but that's not what he was called. He was called the servant of the Lord. And I sure hope that when God looks at me and when God looks at you, that he can say your name and then he can follow with this phrase, the servant of the Lord. You know, let's never, <laughs> never diminish servanthood. Amen. The Bible says the greatest among you are the servants. And uh, Jesus, interesting, did not come to be ministered uh, unto, but to minister. Jesus came to serve. And I thank God for uh, the servants of the Lord. And what a, uh, what a, what a good and high calling. Uh, many times Paul, in introducing himself, called himself a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. No greater, higher calling uh, than that of being a servant of the Lord. And may we all desire to be his servant, serving the Lord. And certainly, what's the, the great, one of the great avenues God's given us to serve him is out through the local church. Amen? And that's how God is, has called us and uh, enabled us to serve him through the local church. And I'm thankful uh, for that. And we, take, we have taken for our heading or our, our title of this song, uh, those three words in verse number 30, where it says, as for God, as for God, his way is perfect. His way is perfect. And we talked about last week how the great battle of our lives is the battle of surrendering to his way and uh, not wanting our own way. And wanting God's way. And uh, I learned a song when I was a kid. I want, I want God's way to be my way. Amen for that. And we, that's what ought to be the great desire uh, of our hearts and our lives. And here's the thing. When we, let our, when we let God's way be our way. And then our way becomes his way. Guess what verse 32. He makes my way perfect. He makes my way perfect. How can my way be perfect? My way be a mess. 
except for the Lord. Amen? Except for the Lord, our way will be a mess. We need to do it God's uh, way and let God have his way uh, and not our way. Certainly, we're living in a day and time, uh, the final church age before the Lord comes back. We're living in the Laodicean times. And Laodicean means people's rights, people wanting their own way. And you'll never, you'll never hear more than any time I probably perhaps uh, in, in history of the church. We hear people talk like this. Well, I think, well, I think we should. Well, I believe, I think. And, and you hear that all the time in churches that we ought to want God's way. And we have God's way, of course, given to us in his precious word. Three simple thoughts here this evening. First of all, number one, God delivers. Verses 1 through 19, God delivers. We looked last week and uh, we encourage you to underline those personal pronouns uh, in verses 1, 2, and 3. Nine different times he uses the personal pronoun my. Uh, it's not just, it's one thing to say, well, God is. It's another thing to say, God is my. He is, uh, he is my strength. He is my rock, verse 2. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer, my God, my strength, my buckler, my salvation, my high tower. And, um, and so, uh, you know, that's, that's the, 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 the great truth. Not only is he, is he those things, is he those things to you? Is he those things to you? And look at verse number three. He says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Trust is expressed through prayer. Trust is expressed by prayer. Do we trust the Lord? Well, uh, what's your prayer life like, right? That's, that's where you can tell where your trust is. That's where you can tell where your de dependence is. Now, let me say something that'll really help you, not only in this passage of scripture, but in many other passages of scripture, and that is this, that in many times in scripture, there is a near fulfillment, and then there is a far fulfillment. In other words, that there is a fulfillment that is close, and then there is another fulfillment that is a far away. And many, and most of those times when it is a far fulfillment, it is fulfillment in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the near fulfillment here in Psalm 18 is that many of these things are true about David, but many of these are in a much greater way true of D David's king, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I hope you understand that. And so uh, look at it, 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 verse number three, for instance, he says, I will call upon the Lord. And I thought about, you know, um, Christ's ministry was bathed in prayer from beginning to end. Bathed in prayer. I mean, over and over and over and over again, you find Christ praying, praying in his ministry, praying in hours of temptation, praying on the cross, praying uh, over and over and over again. And, and certainly a, a great convicting thought is if Christ needed to pray that much, how much more do we need to pray? Mm -hmm. Mark chapter one, a convicting passage of scripture. Christ is so busy, so busy. Read Mark chapter one sometime. I mean, just, I mean, literally from before daylight till dark, ministry, 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 never have a, a, a moment's peace. People coming to him for, uh, for healing, people coming to him for preaching and teaching and ministry, ministry, ministry. The Bible says there in Mark chapter 1 that Jesus arose a great while before day and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Now, if you say to me, well, preacher, I am just so busy, uh, I don't have time to pray. Then, friend, you're too busy. You're too busy, all right? And you do have time to pray. And by the way, you have time for anything that's important to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. You really do. Amen. If prayer is important, you're going to have time, all right? You say, well, preacher, I'm too busy to pray. No, friend, you're too busy not to pray. Amen. Get apart from God and, and, and wherever it is, wherever that solitary place is. You say, well, preacher, I am, man, I am go, go, go from 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. All right, then set the alarm clock at 4 or 4.30 or 5 or whatever you got to do. And listen, whatever you got to do. That, and that's, you say, uh, friend, listen. And what I'm saying is, if Jesus needed to do that, then how much more do we? He rose up a great while before day and departed into a solitary place. And there pray. He says, I, in verse 3 there, he says, I will call upon the Lord. Look at verse number 4. It says, the sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. David here is speaking of his circumstances 
as kind of a hunted animal. We looked at that even in the introduction uh, there about the hand of Saul. That word hand is uh, translated in our Bible as Paul, speaking of the, the devouring of an enemy. And, you know, David here is looking around and, and here's the thing. We're going to get here in a moment, verse 6, where he calls out to the Lord. But here's the thing. We're in verse number 4 and he's looking around. And when you're looking around, what's there going to be? There's going to be fear. There's going to be fear, all right? And, and there's going to be those things. Hey, listen, Brandon, it's not until we go to the Lord that that fear can be remedied, all right? And that's where he is. He's looking around. He's afraid. There's a tidal wave of death and wickedness. He says, the floods, verse number four, of ungodly men made me afraid. But we have ungodly men all around us tonight, don't we? Amen. And we're not careful. We don't give it to the Lord. We don't get our eyes on the Lord. If we don't go to the Lord in prayer and, and, and go to the Lord in these things, then we're going to be uh, tempted uh, to be afraid. Look at verse number five. He says, the sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. The word prevented there means come before me. He's surrounded. They've come before him. They're behind him. They're all around him. David here feels uh, like a criminal facing death. He feels like a sailor about to drown. He feels like an animal hunted and caught in a snare. And it seemed like, what can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. You can pray. Amen. You can pray. Look at verse six. In my distress. Listen, not before, not after. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice. Don't you love those four words? He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears in my distress i called unto the lord i don't miss that in my distress i called upon the lord can i tell you that's one of the reasons why god allows distress that we would pray amen, amen. hey listen friend let's just be honest i'm in a room full of people that want to be self-sufficient. And the man preaching to you tonight wants to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Amen? Sure. Say amen or say on me. It's true either way. <laughs> All right? And what causes us to call upon the Lord? Difficulties. Trials. It's one of the reasons why God allows them. It's one of the reasons why God allows them. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. Now, I love this. Notice this, and cried. Now, God hears the call. Look at that verse six. He hears the call, but he also hears the cry. You know what that tells me? That we don't have to be eloquent in our, in our prayers. <coughs> Amen? Every once in a while, I, I, I'll call on someone, or I, I'll ask someone, are you, um, you know, I think sometimes we think, you know, that, you know, that if I... I pray. You know, that we, some people think that this is how a prayer has to go for a prayer to be answered. Our Father, which hung the most sovereign moon of the galaxies of Most High. Thou who, you know, we have to use those words. You're like, boy, yeah. Oh, that's a prayer that God hears. <laughs> Friend, listen, you know what God hears? He says, not very eloquent. Friend, God's even more interested in your heart. Amen. 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 You think you're going to impress him, the one who made the language? Mm -hmm. Amen. God's not going to be impressed with you using nine jointed words. Amen. Hey, we can call unto the Lord and he answers. But you know what? We can cry unto the Lord. Aren't you glad God's close enough to hear that little cry? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, just that. I mean, just that little, I mean, just that little, and you say, boy, nobody, nobody hears that. It may be an internal cry, just an anguish of soul. You know what? Friend, listen, God hears that just as clearly as anything. Amen. I love that thought there. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. 
He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even, even into his ears. Hey, can I tell you tonight, God may be waiting for you to get to the place where there's no way out but him. God may be working some things in your life where there's no way out but him. I, I've said this before. <laughs> you think you can figure it out. God may just double and triple down on you. You say, well, I, I can handle that. Well, then God will give you more. Well, I can handle that, and then God will give you more. <laughs> and then some people are like, well, I don't know why God's being so mean. He's not being mean. He's trying to help you. Let's see that you need him. You know, when we get, you know, under 19 tons of pressure, we say, God, help me. We should have given it to the Lord at the very first. Amen. Give it to the Lord at the very first. Look at verse number seven. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. We think about the, the wrath of God poured out on Christ. Verse eight, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it again. God rescued, we know David from his foe. But man, think beyond that. Think, think beyond that to Calvary. When Jesus died, darkness came. Rocks rent. Graves burst open. Somebody said this way, God put his hand on the sun. God put his hand on the sanctuary. God put his hand on the stones. God put his hands on the sepulcher. And God put his hands on the soldiers. He sure did, didn't he? Amen. Amen. The earth shook to its core. The sun hid its shame. Look at verse number nine. He bowed the heavens also. It came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Think of Calvary. Think about this, friend, and it ought to make us weep with joy and, and, and thanksgiving that what should have come to me went to him. Amen. I was talking to someone the other day, and I'll be I'll, I'll be vague with this, and they were talking about how uh, they had two biological children, and uh, one adopted child, and they said that uh, the one adopted child is very, very grateful because that child knows what they were spared out of when the parents adopted them. And this man said to me, he said, not that my other children don't appreciate us, but this child appreciates us even more because this child understands what they were brought out of. And then this person said this, he said, and you know what? Shouldn't that be for every one of us who know Jesus Christ as our Savior? Should we not be more appreciative? That's what this man said. I'm like, man, he's preaching now. He said, shouldn't we be more appreciative than we are for what God brought us out of? Amen to that. Well, we don't, we don't thank the Lord uh, as much as we should and, and thank him for all that he took for us that should have gone to us. Let's keep reading here in, in uh, verse uh, number 12. He says, at the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice, <clears throat> hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostril. And notice that again, think about what David went through. Think about what the Lord went through. And then, uh, then we have, you think about all this, all this darkness and all this that we've read about. And now we come to verse 16. It says, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many wanders. He delivered me from my strong enemy 
and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. You know what David's saying? <laughs> you're, saying you're saying, David, you got delivered. Yes, I got delivered. How'd you get delivered? God did it. Mm -hmm. Amen? I, I, I've underlined in my Bible here every time those, where that word he is there in verses 16 through 19. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out. Verse 17, he delivered me. Verse uh, 19, he brought me into a large place. He delivered me. He delighted in me. Friend, it's all God. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is. It is all God. He did it. He is the one that gives us the victory. He is the one that has done it. Amen. Hey, death is a strong enemy. Yeah. Friend, it met its match in Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, grave, where is thy sting? Oh, death, where is thy victory? Thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory. How? He did it through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen to that. Amen to that. Listen, praise God for that. He conquered death, hell, and the grave for us. So thankful for that. He came out alive forevermore. Maybe I'll give you one more thought. We'll come back and we'll finish this. God will it next week. But I want you to look at verse 19. It said, he brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me, notice this, because he delighted in me. That would be the second point, he delights. Not only does he deliver, think about God's deliverance. Yes, yes, God delivered uh, David. Yes, God uh, delivers us and and uh, and God delivered his son and, and, and all those things but God not only delivers but he delights look at verse 19 it says he delighted in me would you hold your place here and I want you to see a thought and it's Proverbs chapter 3 it's worth turning to Proverbs chapter 3 can I tell you this tonight remind us of this tonight that God corrects us because he delights in us. God corrects us. Because he delights in us. Because he loves us. Proverbs chapter 3. And verse number 12. God's word says this. For whom the Lord loveth. He correcteth. Even as a father. The son. In whom. He. Delighteth. Amen. And I just remind us tonight. That God corrects us and dis disciplines us because he loves us. Amen. Can I just remind us this tonight? And, 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 and let, let me go here a minute. We have a society today where the children are out of control. Mm -hmm. Inmates are running the asylum. Mm -hmm. And people don't correct their children. Right. And then they'll say this. You ready? Well, I love them too much. To correct them. Can I tell you this friend. That is 180 degrees wrong. Yeah. Backwards. That's right. From Bible truth. That's right. The problem right. is you don't love them. You love you. Yeah. You're more interested. In, uh, I don't want to preach tonight. Yeah, I do want to preach tonight. But a lot of people are interested in being their pal. Than their parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey my Bible says. That God loves us. And my Bible says because he loves us. He corrects us. He corrects us. And I'm, we ought to be thankful for that. Because of that, he loves us. And why does he love us? Because he delights in us. He wants for us. We ought to correct our children because we want for them. We want them to, uh, to, 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 to go in the way that God wants them to go. So there's going to be correction. God that has the same thing for us. He is interested in us. Because of that, he will correct us. The Bible says, even as a father the son, in whom he delighted. I'm reminded the scripture says that no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, doesn't it? But grievous, but afterward. Amen? Afterward. Hey, listen, my parents had, uh, had, had standards for me when I was a kid. Uh, I did not uh, date 
unchaperoned. There was rules and, and things like that. He said, preacher, you probably loved that at the time. No, I thought it was old fashioned. I thought it was Neanderthal. I thought it was medieval. I thought it was Chinese torture. <laughs> hey, you know when I appreciated it? Are you listening? You know when I appreciated it? When I walked down the, al the altar on the 6th of September, 1996, a virgin, and my wife was the same way. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Right? You see? Afterward, right? That's the thing we need to understand, right? Is God will discipline us. He will correct us because he loves us. And that point needs to be reiterated over and over again because when you're going through it sometimes, you're going through that chasing, that correcting, that trial, or whatever it is, Satan will say to you, well, you know what, if God really loved you, then you wouldn't be going through that. <laughs> Did you ever get to think, God, you may be going through that because God loves you? That correcting, that chastening, that refining, that purging, whatever it is that God's doing, uh, you know, thank him for that. Amen. If he convicts you, thank him. If he corrects you, thank him. If he challenges you, thank him. If he changes you and, 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 and does those things, thank him for those things. Right. <laughs> hey, listen, a, a man left to himself goes astray. He's ashamed. <clears throat> He's a disgrace. Friend, if I go my own way, I'm just a total abject failure. Amen? God corrects us because he delights in us. Hey, friend, he loves you. He loves me, and because of that, he's going to correct us. Because of that, he is going to do those things to help us because he loves us. Don't believe the lie of the devil. Don't believe that for one second. Now, next week we'll get into more of this. We're we'll talking about God's Delight. A lot of good things I'm going to share with you about that. And then we're going to finish it up uh, next week by God's directing. God's directing. And uh, so we're going to get into that here uh, a little bit more next week. I'll tell you what, let's have an altar call tonight. And uh, let's think about some things that we've already studied here tonight uh, in this altar call. First of all, uh, 